know what you think of this uh, magic background that uh, we have to hear, whether you were, uh, whether you like it, whether it uh, suits you, and uh, we're going to look to to to, uh, to start in a moment or two's time. And um, that's great, Peter. Great to uh, to see you here joining us uh, yeah, again. Great to see uh, a lot of you coming in to, to join us. And if you're joining us here on the uh, live stream through uh, YouTube, you're you're very welcome as uh, as always. Um, you know we're uh, happy to hear to sort of take on any of your questions for today's session. So you've got a thought or you know particular burning uh, issue that you want us to uh, discuss please you know pop it in the chat box there uh, you'll be able to uh, we'll happily sort of uh, look at to help you my assistant here as well from admiral will, will undoubtedly be able to answer any uh, particular technical questions that you uh, that you uh, that you may have uh, so you know my name's paul we're going to start in a uh, moment's time where we're going to be looking at about trading the japanese nikkei markets uh, and it'd be fascinating as always to, to know what if any experience you have of trading the the nikkei i, I appreciate as always that you know we have a really broad range of people who come and join our sessions here so from complete beginners to, to people who've been trading for for many years you're all very welcome and of course we all want to be able to sort of you know provide uh, value and insight to to help you wherever you are uh, on the uh, uh, on the spectrum so if you have uh, any experience please as i said just pop it in the other uh, the chat box or if you're watching this on youtube you've got questions stick it in the commentary box if you find this helpful please you know uh, by all means give us a give us a like um on there so uh peter says there uh, that it's all good but he's uh, he's never traded himself um well that's a good job you're here then peter because that this is what this session is for all right an opportunity for us to to go through and to, to give you a little bit of an enlightenment to give you a little bit of introduction into uh, what is available uh, so that you're in a position to sort of you know to add it to your uh, to your trading knowledge so um, i'm just going to try and uh, click on a share screen here hopefully this will uh, help give you uh, all a little bit of insight uh, and before we uh, before we just uh, start with uh, the presentation i thought i'd just make you aware of this uh, of this kind of a new page on the Admiral Markets uh, website, admiralmarkets.com forward slash uh, analytics. Uh, and, you know, what the, the guys here have uh, done at Admiral Markets has done a fantastic job at, at trying to bring sort of news and analytics all onto one page to, to help you have a little bit of a one-stop shop to sort of just come and try and give you. So um, I'll let you go through it next, you know, and enjoy it all at your own uh, at your own glance. But it's providing a bit of a briefing, a little bit of a news, um, a little bit of insight onto uh, uh, particular uh, uh, stock sectors or particular elements of interest giving you an insight what's the economic news coming up you can also start to do economic comparisons across um across uh, the whole uh, kind of regions of the uh, of the world uh, and also giving you an idea of what are the upcoming events okay in terms of understanding the big news uh, and also looking at specific you know uh, either sectors or stocks or particular areas um, of interest uh, and you'll also see links to the uh, to the sessions that we've either run or the that are on the uh, sort of youtube webinar archive okay so um it's fantastic it's just all on one page tons and tons of great stuff there okay so uh, by all means you know make sure you go and check it out admiralmarkets.com forward slash analytics and uh you know check it out let us know what you think okay and uh we uh we you know we always enjoy and love having the uh, the sort of the feedback and the commentary from you uh from you uh, uh ladies and gentlemen when you're uh, when you're joining us so but with uh without uh any ado uh you know we are here to talk about how to trade the Japanese Nikkei market. Uh, hopefully you can uh, see the slide. Hope you can still see me and hear uh, hear my voice. That always makes for a better uh, webinar. And, uh, you know, what we're going to look to do is talk about providing insight on, on where the opportunities are within this um, particular Asian index, you might say, the, the kind of the, the premier trading index. That's the uh, um, that's what, you know, many people would look at it as. And uh, remember, you know, here we are at Admiral Markets, a uh, you know truly global broker, but with support in uh, in local languages. Uh, they're licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products and allowing you the opportunity to engage with markets using either MT4 or MT5 and the Admiral Markets Supreme Edition. Uh, if you've got any particular questions about them, please get in touch with your account representative uh, and they'll be very happy to uh, to help guide you. So um, what we're going to talk about today, well, uh, we're going to talk about well, you know, what is the Nikkei, all right? 
uh, why is it important and how we can trade it. As I said, I always appreciate that, uh, you know, we have a broad spectrum of, uh, of, you know, people in the room. It's always great to sort of have the, uh, you know, complete uh, range of, uh, of experience and uh, styles of trading and stuff. So as I said, if you've got experience, if you've thought about it before, give us a, give us a shout, put in the chat box, you know, what you found from uh, trading the, the Nikkei yourself, you know, or, uh, or particular questions that you might have um, about it. Uh, for those who don't know me, as I said, my name is Paul. I've traded for many years. I've traded for funds. Okay, I've traded for clients. And uh, you know, my my primary focus myself in my own trading is FX indices and commodities. And I like to be a sort of dominant trend trader for sort of longer term trading and a reversal mean reversion trader for shorter term intraday trading. That's those are my particular uh, styles. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, you know we've got to talk about the, the kind of the, the main matinee of the day, which is about trading the Japanese Nikkei market. So you know, as the slide there says, is that not unsurprisingly, many traders focus on the North American and European stock markets. That shouldn't really come as a surprise. You know, we appreciate that. You know, uh, Admiral Markets is whilst you know was a you know a, a global brokerage. You know, there is invariably uh, there has been you know a uh, a focus on perhaps what we might look at as you know kind of uh, Western stock markets in terms of North American, North American and European, but. What that means is that many traders forget that the Tokyo Stock Exchange is the it's the second largest financial center in the world in terms of market capitalization um, after Wall Street itself. And so today, what we're going to look at today is what would be known as the, the Nikkei 225, right, which is Japan's main equity index, which sits on the Tokyo Stock Exchange. Uh, and you know, we'll look at ways to trade this kind of fascinating, uh, fascinating index. So um, it's, uh, as I said, it's, um, you know, what we're doing here is hopefully opening your eyes to, to, to more opportunity, to further opportunity with markets. As I said, many people will focus on North American and European, you know, because the, the prevalence, you know, there's this huge amounts of uh, information and insight, okay, and trading resources around that. But invariably what we're doing is, you know, hopefully be providing the opportunity for, let's say for, for, for Western traders who, you know, may have just focused in the West to recognize that there is actually a bigger, wider world out there providing lots of different opportunities. And of course, as the world changes, and as of course, as, you know, geopolitics and economics shift, well, then basically that allows the opportunity, you know, for you to uh, expand your horizons as a, uh, as a, as a particular uh, uh, trader. And um, so uh, uh, Massimo saying that uh, he's he's not hearing any uh, audio there. Uh, that might be on your end there, Massimo. You might want to check your uh, own audio settings. I'm, ho I'm hoping that everybody else can sort of still um, see and hear me. Um, you know, if you can, just uh, let me know. Or if you can't, even you know that as well. But uh, I think that might be your uh, end, Massimo. You might want to just check your own particular uh, audio settings there. So. <clears throat> And, you know, as we said, it's the uh, um, as we said that it's uh, Peter says, yep, it's all fine. That's great. Thank you, Peter. Um, as we said, the, the Nikkei two two five is the is the main stock index for the the Tokyo Stock Exchange. Okay, um, just as a buy the buy, some of that is on my own particular bucket list of to go and uh, to go and visit. Okay, I visited the London Stock Exchange. I visited uh, Wall Street, and I would actually and I visited the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, uh, and I'd like to go and visit the uh, Tokyo Stock Exchange as well and perhaps after all of this all of this <coughs> shenanigans is over that will be on one of my uh, uh, sort of uh, travel lists but as the slide says that it, it's made up of 225 stocks that covers across around about 35 industry sectors so you know think about that okay you know it, you know nasdaq is like the top 100 the dow is the top 30 okay the dax is the similar FTSE 100 okay and you've got the FTSE 250 and the FTSE 350 here in the uk but also the kind of Nikkei 225 is, is, as the name implies, 225 stocks. Uh, and it has been up and running since 1950. So in, in some respects, it is not, in some respects, it's not as mature uh, a stock market as we would see perhaps in the West. However, you know, it is, uh, it, you know, it is highly effective, highly efficient. Uh, and for those of us who are old enough to remember, um, it would have uh, it hit its actual highs during the the sort of Japanese boom of the uh, of the 1980s. And uh, if you look at uh, charts that go back that far, okay, you'll see that you know. And for those of you who remember, you know, uh, Japan went through a real boom in the 1980s, okay, and uh, you know it was really. Um, uh, you know, they both, you know, just basically the country, the economy, everything was soaring. And of course, that filtered through into the Nikkei and it's hit its highs. And it's never really got back 
to those particular highs, okay, um, since the 1980s. However, what we have seen it here very recently is that it's recently hit its what would maybe call its 21st century highs, okay. Uh, in terms of this particular century, we've seen it hit highs, and we're going to look at that in a uh, in a moment or two. So uh, this is a monthly chart. Okay, this is the the monthly chart that you can find on the uh, Adler Markets MT4 and MT5 platform. And um, you might see it here. I've got it on the. Uh, let's have a look. Bring up the old drawing tool here. Um, I've got it on the monthly. Okay, on the the sort of the monthly chart because that gives us an opportunity to to go back. You know, many years back to sort of you know 2005. Hopefully, you can uh, see that. So we're going back 16 years. And what's kind of of interest too in the kind of a longer term is that, you know, we saw the lows here uh, around about kind of into late 2008, October 2008. So uh, those of us who are uh, old enough or were even trading through it might uh, recognize and remember, you know, that kind of particular period uh, that's, you know, the period associated with the uh, great financial crash. But I mean, you can see actually, you know, from, from around about 2006, you know, the kind of the Nikkei was actually coming off those uh, particular highs that were recent highs down there but you know we, we bottomed out this century in 2008 uh, and you can see that the kind of the Nikkei it, it kind of went sideways for about four years really you know it didn't have the it didn't have the pullback as quick as you might have looked at on certain things like the American indexes which by 2009 was starting to, to edge their way up but you know what we saw was you know breakout in kind of a 2012 2013 okay it was um, a great trading opportunity which we'll talk about a little bit uh, a little bit later and you can see for yourself you know we've we've had really sort of quite you know quite great run in the uh, what you'd look at in maybe the last 8 to 10 years yes we did have the uh, the kind of the covid crash that we've seen but as you can see for yourself all right you know you know the reversal off that from from lows down towards the kind of 16000 up towards up and above the number of 30000 that has been you know quite a stellar stellar sort of last year for for sort of the japanese indexes uh, you know and and we'll look at that in a little bit more depth later on okay we'll have a look at the live charts so stay with us so we're able to 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 have a look at that but Hopefully you can see that you know over the last ten years that has been you know it's been a it's been a you know a fantastic um, fantastic longer term okay uh, sort of a bull trend depending upon your your particular time scale and and uh, the sort of life the timeline that you're looking at but you can see that that has actually been you know some fantastic moves in there you know and as I said part of this is about making it available and aware to sort of traders you know not just in the West but globally who you know what might sort of look at other opportunities that uh, that are available to us and if we quickly look at the the daily chart what we can see here is you know what's actually gone on in the last year so this is the uh, as I say this is the daily chart and you know we had a little bit of the you can see the that little bit of the COVID crash there kind of you know February to March there we can see that that uh, how that particularly dropped down uh, and then we put in a you know a really quite a nice sort of double bottom there uh, and you can see for yourself okay we had a few months go up there then you know we had a little bit of a you know kind of a little bit of a quiet month all right or quite quite a few months okay we've kind of congested what was happening there well some of you will remember that you know really you know a we went into summer B, everybody started to sit on their hands because we were running into the US elections, okay, uh, which we covered quite, you know, quite uh, considerably here on the Trading Spotlight webinar series. Uh, and then what we can see is hopefully you can see there is that um, is that, you know, that was sort of starting into November. And we had, you know, the, the change of uh, the change of command in the, in the US. But equally, also what we had was invariably the uh, the announcement about the vaccines, and that just basically gave you know huge boost to uh, to uh, global stock markets. Not just the Nikkei two two five, but actually what you can see is that you know that really just basically we've just had a, a fantastic trend there on the uh, the Nikkei for the uh, well for the last few months. And as I said, you know we were basically hitting um hitting twenty first century highs. Okay up above 30,000 now where uh, we had an interesting day yesterday maybe we'll have time to look to look at that okay at the moment it's just uh, at the moment it's just basically putting in a bit of a uh, uh, you know a bit of a flag pattern there on the daily chart okay just uh, which is uh, for those of you who have been or joined our previous sessions that's a bit of a continuation pattern there for uh, for um, for traders, but of course we've had a, a rather interesting 24 hours, should we say, as we've as we've spoken about uh, uh, over here in the in these uh, in the particular just equity markets as I as I present this. But 
you know, the important thing, as you can see, is that, you know, it's been a, it's been a fascinating year, okay, from February of last year, okay, where, you know, in the end of February, start of March, you know, we were collapsing into those lows around about 16,000 to up above 30,000. I mean, a 14,000 point run in 12 months is just, you know, that's just quite a stunning, quite a stunning run. And what we'll talk about in a little bit later on is understanding, well, how did that happen? Why did that happen? Why, why is that of, uh, why has that occurred? And why is that of actually any interest or use to yourself. So you know, remember what we're saying is that uh, you know the uh, the Nikkei is is 225 stocks across 35 industry sectors, but also what will happen is that you know there are there are names there that hopefully that you will recognise of big household names, names like Toyota, Honda, Nissan, Mitsubishi, Sony, Nintendo, Nikon, and SoftBank. You know, a, a whole host of, of what might be called, you know, household names, okay, wherever you are in the world, you know, regardless of your area in the world, you know, they are, you know, they are big global companies, okay, but also equally, it provides you with a very, very good representation of the Japanese economy. Now, what we also have to remember is, okay, if we look at the kind of bigger, broader picture, is that not only that is, you know, the Japanese economy is very much geared towards exporting, okay? You know, you can see from those names there, okay, many of the people here joining us today that they might actually, they probably will own products, okay? Products or services from these particular companies or from other Japanese uh, companies. And so, you know, Japan, the Japanese economy is geared up towards exporting, okay? It is a, it's a very, very keen exporting a, uh, a economy, you know, probably was in some respects, in some respects, was probably the kind of the premier export economy. It's been overtaken by uh, China now, you'd say, but nonetheless, okay, it is still a real strong, uh, real strong economy with a real strong basis on their exporting, okay? And as I said, most of you will be aware of those big household names. Many of you might actually, you know, drive cars or, or use Sony products or have a Nintendo, et cetera. So, you know, there's, um, you know, they are, they have a real global reach. Okay. And that becomes important, you know, later on when we start to look at you know, how that impacts, how we particularly trade these, uh, trade these markets. With regards to the uh, just the logistics, okay, of the Nikkei market, you know, there's just one or two things that traders, especially Western traders, need to be aware of. Simply because, you know, you've, firstly, you've got to understand the the sort of the time difference there between our between ourselves here, certainly me here in London time, uh, you know, and there across in Tokyo time, there's a you know, there's a vast difference. Um, uh, and what you'll see is that you know, also there, it's there sort of the stock exchange is not open all day like you would find with most western um, most western uh, stock exchanges okay so actually you can see is that you know the the the, the actual exchange is open for like two periods during the day from 9 a.m to 11 a.m and 1 p.m to 3 p.m and that is tokyo time um, however okay you know in this day of uh, online trading you know uh, we, we also have an electronic contract that pretty much runs the majority of the day and that is what you will have access to be able to trade here with uh, with uh, admiral markets and that runs from like kind of 0230 to 0925 if that's the kind of trade you are uh, or from 0955 to sort of 2115 um, okay so it's not a it's not a uh, not necessarily a full okay 24 hour contract but it's it covers the vast majority of the day and what it does do for Western traders is that it uh, it makes it ideal for overnight trading, which we're going to look at in the moment. OK, I appreciate that lots of traders will focus on sort of trading the kind of European session, maybe the London session. But for, you know, one or two other reasons that may not particularly suit you for some of the people joining us today. It might actually prefer your trading style to put a trade on in the evening and then come back in the morning to see how that trade has played out. That might sort of suit some particular traders. OK, you know, one of the one of the joys of online electronic trading is that it, you know the, that it just allows and encompasses as uh, you know a wide range of different trading styles and uh, you know one of the best things you can do as a trader is to actually work out and understand what your own particular trading style is that 
is the key element, okay? If you understand what your particular trading style is, well, then you'd be able to have success however you particularly wish to, uh, to choose to look at um, particular markets. But, you know, uh, as I said, it, it makes it ideal for overnight trading, okay? If that's the particular style you particularly like, or, you know, maybe you want to trade in the, uh, in the, uh, in the evenings because you might have a day job, you know, you uh, you know your own particular lifestyles and your own particular risk awareness um, whatsoever. So um, uh, what I've got here is this is once again it's a chart of the Nikkei, but it's a, a thirty minute chart. All right, it's um, it's uh, let's get the old drawing tool up here. It's a chart uh, of the uh, thirty minute. Okay, and what I wanted to do is to basically to just show some of the market behaviour in the Nikkei. Not unsurprisingly, okay, because the main uh, the main areas are uh, you know the main times for the Nikkei market are what would be considered overnight for us here over in the uh, in the west and west of Japan. Um, it, not unsurprisingly, you know, a, a good deal of the the market movement happens during that period. That shouldn't really come as a surprise. Uh, and as I said, what I've got here is a 30 minute chart of the, the Nikkei. Uh, and what I have here is you might see these kind of gray boxes here. Uh, and what that actually is doing is that's kind of showing the sort of, you know, the, the kind of period of the uh, Japanese sort of stock exchange when it's open there. So what would be overnight to me, you know, what sometimes you'll hear traders call, you know, it's like the kind of the Asian box, right? Okay, of the Asian range. Um, this is, you know, that's what it's replicating. And, and hopefully what you can see is, you know, by the sizes of these uh, boxes is that actually you can see that, you know, there is there is quite, you know, quite a considerable amount of movement at time, excuse me, compared to other um, to compared to other times. But equally, what we can also note is that, you know, there is movement within the Nikkei during what might be considered, you know, the kind of the, the European session and the uh, the US session as well and especially when it comes to things like the Nikkei what you know what we are finding what we're seeing is that you know with the rise of algos with the rise of you know trading you know trading computers is that very often you know the indexes are, are actually very closely correlated okay and they actually you know, pretty much follow themselves you know uh, uh, constantly and so if you look at charts that have you know the, the both you know the Nikkei but then also the US markets the major European markets like the, the DAX okay the FTSE the, the CAC the, you know the, the IBEX the MIB etc and even things like you know other uh, Asian markets like you know, the ASX or the HSI uh, you will notice that very often they, they these days they actually follow each other uh, and that kind of correlation is both it's both a blessing and a curse okay it's both a blessing and a curse and we're going to touch more on that a little bit later but at this moment what i just want you to understand and recognize is that you know there's, there's lots of good movement overnight okay in the uh, in the the nikkei uh, but also equally you know there is there are moves in time zones like european session u.s session which might be a more natural trading time for for the majority of people watching us um here today Uh, and, you know, and as I said, you know, you can find this on both the Admiral Markets MT4 and MT5, okay? What you will find, okay, the Nikkei, it is called, all right, JP225, all right? That is what you're uh, particularly looking for, JP225, and also the other Asian indices, if you're interested, we have the Australian at the ASX and Hong Kong, okay, at the Hang Seng, the HSI 50, okay? So if you wish to focus on Asian indices, uh, and I did a session on uh, intraday trading Asian indices. It might be well over a year or so ago, you know, on the uh, trading spotlight. You know, you'll find that in the uh, Admiral Markets uh, YouTube uh, webinar archive. But, you know, for today, if you're trading on MT5, MT4, you'll find it JP225. That is the reflection of the, uh, the Nikkei, okay? Just so you're able to add it uh, and utilize it in the uh, uh, Admiral Markets platforms. So, you know, as I said, you, you can trade you know, and invest in the Nikkei 225 with Admiral Markets. You can have either, you know, you trade it with the uh, uh, Admiral Trade.mt4, Admiral Zero.mt4, or Admiral MT5. And of course, you can also uh, then add the Admiral Supreme Edition, okay, for both MT4 and MT5. Definitely worth checking out. 
once again if you want to know more about the uh, supreme edition uh, i think my colleagues jens did a couple of webinars in the trading spotlight series about some of the, the tools that are available with the supreme edition so very uh, well worth sort of checking that out in the webinar archive uh, if you have more questions about how you could trade okay the, the nikkei with admiral markets you know please uh, after this uh, we'll put some details up you know please get in touch with your account representative or contact admiral markets and they'll be very very happy to help you and guide you and uh, and help you understand you know uh, how you can engage with the nikkei uh, with uh, along with admiral markets so, uh, you know, just before we have a little look at some charts, we can have a little look at setups. Um, you know, I always talk about how it's important to have a right pre-market routine. Uh, I, I, you know, I never apologize about putting up, the, you know, one or two of these slides, you know, uh, whenever we talk about, you know, getting engaged with the markets, because, you know, it will help you enormously set the right pre-market routine so that you are in a position to do the right things at the all time. And it is, if you're going to do something like intraday trading indices or intraday trading any asset, really, you know, it's important that you have a little simple plan, okay, that should be simple and clear, okay? Uh, and regardless of whether you're trading the Nikkei, whether you're trading Bitcoin, gold, whether you're trading pound against dollar, okay, you know, the, the asset class isn't necessarily that important, but you want to be making sure that you identify significant levels on the kind of monthly, weekly, and daily charts, because you don't want to be you don't want to be buying into resistance or selling into into supply all right you want to be looking at some good simple price action triggers at kind of some such particular levels which we'll talk a little bit more about uh later but also there is a you know an absolute wealth of material on the uh trading spot like youtube or uh, youtube archive to, to fill on that uh uh, you know, just a little simple thing, you know, for new traders when entering a trade, be sure to wait for a break of the candle. All right. Sometimes new traders, they get a little bit excitable. OK, and they wait for the, they fail to wait for the sort of the candle to complete or and then the next candle to break out of it. They actually literally as soon as they sort of see it, they want to chase it and and enter that uh, trade. If you're going to trade, you know, using some simple price action ideas, OK, make sure that you have a stop loss. Make sure it's on the other side of the candle. You know, a good risk management is that you you know you're looking to risk no more than one percent per trade, and also you're looking for having an asymmetric reward to risk ratio. So if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna you know if you're gonna risk you know a hundred euros, well then you should be in the position to sort of achieve 200, 300, 400, 500. Okay, it should be at least two to one, if not uh, if not higher. And one of the simple things you can do is to record your trades, review what your trades are, and then repeat the good ones, okay? You'll very quickly start to identify which are your good setups, which are your poor setups, and repeat the, the good ones. And that comes from keeping good, uh, good records. Uh, and remember, you know, that if you are going to, you know, intraday or engage with uh, any markets, we always set a few simple rules and expectations, namely risk management is absolutely key and you always make sure that you honor it. Um, you want to know what news is coming out for that session, okay? Let's say you particularly choose to, to reassess your life and that you actually want to sort of you know, put yourself out there as an, as an overnight uh, Nikkei trader. You know, you still want to know what news is coming out, okay, for that particular uh, Asian session. Do your analysis before you're trading, not necessarily on the uh, on the hop, and you know resist the temptation to trade out of session. Okay, so you know that's kind of an interesting conundrum for us here. Okay, as we talk about the Japanese, the Nikkei, you know, but you know, as I said, <clears throat> the vast majority of the, the trades are going to go through during that Asian session. But there will be some you know, trading during the European and the US session, as I said, because those indices you know, they literally very correlate and the kind of algos just uh, flow with them. Uh, but, you know, just remember the majority of the efforts and the majority of the trading uh, you know, in the Nikkei will be done during the, uh, the Asian session. Uh, as always, ensure you have a good Internet connection. You would think that that would go without saying, but, you know, you know, we're all working from home and have been for the last year. OK, and uh, with the best will in the world. All right. That uh, the best will in the world that, you know, sometimes your Wi-Fi falls. Sometimes, you know, sometimes your Internet connection drops. It happens to us all, you know, whether we're doing presentations or trying to trade. So just always make sure you have a good Internet uh, Internet connection. Uh, and as always, make sure you're rested and prepared for the session. All right. Especially if you're going to try and trade a little bit overnight during the uh, during the Asian session. You want to make sure that you're, uh, as always, you're rested on top of it. So, as I said, we always put those couple of slides in because we want to just effectively, um, you know, we want to just constantly be, you know, consistent in, you know, in the kind of standards and expectations that we want you to be aware of when you're going to engage with uh, engage with markets. 
So, you know, um, when we've talked about trading Asian instruments, you know, and, and talking about trading the Japanese Nikkei index, you talk about, well, you know, what can be the edge? What can be our edge as traders? All right. Uh, and, you know, in other sessions we did a talking about indices, uh, we discussed how, you know, to use the algos for our benefits. We just said a little bit earlier on, you know, increasingly across those indices, you know, they, they track each other very, very closely. Uh, and this still stands the same for the Nikkei, okay? Uh, although the correlations are not as strong as they are, for, excuse me, for the US indices. You know, but, you know, that is... That's not to say there aren't some good correlations, as I said, if, you know, and we'll look at it in a minute. Even if you just look at the charts, you will see that there are correlations across all of those global indices. It's almost like we're, it's almost like we're moving towards like one big global index, okay, that will just give us an indication of what's going on in the, in the global economy. What also becomes key for us, trading the Nikkei, is, is what is the risk sentiment. This becomes very interesting. I, you know, I kind of mentioned... Um, a little bit earlier along that um, that very often what we see, um, uh, you know, very often what we see is that, you know, the uh, um, the kind of moves within the Nikkei uh, can be related to, to risk and in particular related to the, to the currency, the Japanese yen, which we're, we're going to talk about a little bit now. Um, uh, but what we do see is, you know, risk sentiment is important when we trade the Asian indices, um, because what you have to realize is, remember, this is the Nikkei 225, so on the Tokyo Stock Exchange, okay? Um, and you have to remember that the Japanese yen is one of the world's main safe havens, and there's reasons for that. And if you look on the Admiral Market YouTube, you'll find that there are, you know, um, there's, there's quite a lot of detail and resource around about how that happens. But what we have to recognize is that, you know, when the Japanese yen, you know, being one of the world's main safe havens, that can have an impact on the Nikkei as well. So what we understand is, you know, when risk sentiment is off, how do you believe markets will react? And also how when risk sentiment is on, how do you think that will show up in the charts? So just, you know, think about that. As I said, the Nikkei is very tradable, but it's also very linked to the Japanese yen. And in particular, because of the Japanese yen is a safe haven. And so when risk sentiment is off globally, we tend to have flows into the Japanese yen. And when risk sentiment is on, we have flows out of the Japanese yen, okay, into other more um, uh, risk accepting instruments, currencies, assets. And it's a question about you understanding, you know, recognizing that when those particular, because it has an impact on flows and that has an impact, <coughs> excuse me, on uh, on particular markets. Uh, and to kind of reflect that and show that um, what we've got here is, you know, we've got a chart of the uh, the, the Nikkei. Let's bring this up to get the old tool up here. This what we've got here, JP225. OK, the, the Nikkei on a daily chart against the dollar against the Japanese. Yeah. All right. And this is, you know, over the last couple of months here. OK, so what we have seen is, you know, you've as I talked earlier is, you know, we've seen, you know, great moves up in the, the Nikkei. You know, it's it's performing just as just as we particularly like to see in an uptrend. OK, we're making higher highs, higher lows. OK, you can see the, the blue 20 period, 50, uh, 20 period moving averages above the 50 uh, and, you know, and prices riding that quite nicely. That's a very clear trend. And then when we look at the you know the dollar against the Japanese yen in that particular moment, what we're seeing is here, of course, is, is quite similar, quite similar price action. The dollar against the Japanese yen is performing higher highs and higher lows. Now just remember what that is showing, all right? What that's showing that dollar yen chart, when that chart is rising up like that, what's that telling us? Okay, that is telling us that the you know the US dollar is stronger and the Japanese yen is weaker. OK, and if you took that into a, a bigger picture, what we'd be seeing is over the last couple of months is that we have had a real risk on sentiment. OK, and uh, I sometimes post it on the Traders Yard page I do for my own clients on Monday. My Monday sessions is just, you know, printing where is the strength and the weakness within the FX markets, which is an indication of whether we're in a risk on or a risk off environment. So when we see Japanese yen weakening, OK, we are in a risk on sentiment. And what that means is, remember, I said earlier, OK, is that, you know, the Japanese, the Japan economy is, is geared towards exporting, hugely geared towards exporting. So 
because it's a, it's very uh, it's very hugely geared towards uh, exporting, it's also enormously sensitive to price rises in the Japanese yen. So if the Japanese yen is weakening because there's a risk on sentiment, that is actually good. That's good for Japanese economies and that's good for the Japanese companies on the Nikkei because invariably what it means is it means their exports would appear cheaper to, to global buyers. Conversely, when we have a, a you know, risk off sentiment and money flows into safe havens like Swiss franc, like the Japanese yen, what we see is the Japanese yen strengthening. And if we see the Japanese yen strengthening, well, invariably that starts to make companies on the Nikkei makes their exports more expensive to buy, doesn't it? Which will have a knock on impact onto to sales and profits, etc. So there is a real strong correlation there between the, the, the Nikkei and the Japanese yen. And, and I would suggest that, you know, to, to be able to trade the, uh, the, the Nikkei well, you also equally have to keep on top of the situation with the Japanese yen. Okay, the the two of them are you know they're they're, they're interlocked. Okay, they're you know, absolutely interlocked, and it's it's you know absolutely crucial as a trader that you start to understand globally what the risk sentiment is. Okay, you know is, is are we in a risk on environment or are we in a risk off, and seeing how is that affecting the Japanese yen because I can assure you that it will be having an impact upon the Nikkei, you know, okay, regardless of how well the Japanese economy might be doing, if there is, you know, uh, if there is a total risk off sentiment, okay, and the Japanese yuan is strong, that has knock on impacts, okay, into the Nikkei. So yeah, yeah, I, I would almost suggest you, you know, you can't trade one without, you know, the, the other, you have to, you have to effectively keep a very, very good eye on that. So, you know, if you are considering it, looking at it, just make sure that, you know, you're also watching what's going on with the Japanese yen, because that will make a, that will make a, a, a huge difference to your, uh, to your ability to operate effectively uh, in those markets. So, um, you know, as we said, the points to note is that, uh, as we said, there's a very strong correlation between the Japanese yen and the, the Nikkei, all right? Very strong. You have to be aware of that. And also, there will be certain economic news that will have an impact upon the Nikkei. Not a surprise there. So, things like Japan's GDP, okay, gross domestic product, uh, things like industrial productions, the trade balance. Remember, okay, they're a very sensitive export economy, okay? So, invariably, they want to see, you know, whether they've got a strong trade balance. Not unsurprisingly, Japanese employment figures will figure in there an element uh, and quite quite significant will be the decisions of the Bank of Japan, okay, the central bank uh, of, uh, of Japan, the BOJ, okay, uh, how they operate, okay, and what they try to do to effectively keep the yen competitive in order to help out the, the Nikkei and you need to be aware of that. Uh, and there's also a Japanese specific piece of news called the Tankan Index, uh, which is quite similar to the US manufacturing uh, ISM numbers, right? Uh, and, and, you know, as you, you can well imagine, okay, you know, Japan is an export economy, all right? So they're always manufacturing stuff to sell globally, okay? So that kind of understanding the, 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 the confidence in that, you know, which you're getting from the Tankan Index, is, is quite key because it will have a, a, an impact upon the, uh, the Nikkei itself. So, um, you know, when it comes to trading it, all right, two little ad additional elements, which we've touched on a little bit before, is a case of, you know, are you trading during the Asian session or are you trading outside the Asian session? I appreciate some people, depending upon their location and their lifestyle, might be trading during the Asian session. Uh, others of us, you know, myself included, you know, you'd be, we'd be trading my predominantly outside of that Asian session. And as I said, depends upon your geographic local uh, location. I will explain a little bit about both situations. Uh, when it comes to intraday trading the Nikkei, um, you know, we have covered a lot in our previous uh, webinars, okay, on Trading Spotlight about very simple tools that you could take away to use. So we have talked about the importance and the interest in things like the uh, previous highs and lows. Uh, we've talked about things like double tops and bottoms, and we've talked about price action setups and combinations. They are all of those videos are in the uh, the trading spotlight webinar archive. If you haven't already seen them, I suggest you go back there. There is an absolute wealth of, of, of great information there that is there at your fingertips to be able to do. And uh, and the reason I talk about that is because actually, you know, if you're going to do something like intraday trading in the Nikkei, you know, you want to keep your plans as simple and as consistent as possible, regardless of whether you're trading FX, US, European, Asian indices, 
commodities, cryptos, etc. You tend to find having a few simple setups that you can utilize across the board tends to tends to be generally easier for you as a trader because it's about you being able to execute consistently day after day after day, and that's that's that is become starts to become key for you as a uh, as a trader. So, you know, what I have here, okay, and what we've talked about in the past is, you know, I actually have a profile set up for Asian indices, okay, uh, so I have, you know, on it, I have the uh, ASX200, the HSI50, the Nikkei, uh, and also either the dollar yen or the uh, Aussie yen, okay, just give me an indication of those yen pairs. Uh, and hopefully what you can see, they're just in this example here, hourly charts, is, is that we can see is some of the correlations across them, okay, remember what I was saying earlier is that a lot of the indexes are very correlated these days. Uh, and also, you know, what we're recognizing is that, you know, what we've seen here is just, let me just get the old drawing tool up here, is that, uh, da, 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 is that you know, uh, we've had the dollar yen, okay, sliding down, which is giving us an indication that the Japanese yen, okay, is strengthening for whatever reason. Maybe at this particular occasion, there's a, something occurred and, and the, the world is going into a risk off sentiment. And hey, Presto, what we're seeing is the uh, Australian index is selling off. The Hong Kong index is selling off, as is the Nikkei index selling off, okay? Hopefully, you can start to see, you know, when, when you're watching these correlations, they can help you as a trader just to give you an idea of, you know, you don't want to be fighting the biggest wave, okay? You know, think of it like a surfer, right? You want to surf the, the, the simplest waves for you. You don't want to be trying to fight the market. Well, yeah. You're, you're very welcome to fight the market if you like, but but there'll only be one winner and, and it probably won't be you, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, my, my sage uh, wisdom advice would be don't try and fight the market, try and find a way to surf with the market. And if you can, the market is always communicating to you, it's always telling you what it wants to do. All right. It's, it's there for you to just basically understand how it communicates understand the message that it's trying to tell you and then you be able to actually you know sort of turn that into a simple trade plan that you can uh, that you can follow and work with <clears throat> uh, and what you can see here is, you know, and this is kind of an interesting thing in terms of, you know, that was during the, you know, the kind of Asian session. But, you know, once you're coming out of it, in this particular case, it is that is that effectively, you know, the, the actual the selling in Asia, it, in Asian indices accelerated once we got into the European session on this particular case, okay? And that, that kind of starts to become significant to us. You know, that kind of, that kind of gives us that kind of understanding that, you know, there's just huge, um, uh, you know, huge correlation between the global indexes and that when we switch our sentiment switches from risk on to risk off, well, you can get you know, really strong buying trends and equally you can get really strong selling trends. OK, and it's important for you to be aware of this and having something like this, a chart set up like this, you know, allows you just to give you a little bit of a sense of, you know, what what the trend is, what, you know, what is the risk sentiment? OK, because from that you can start to identify and decide, you know, how, how you're going to position yourself as a uh, as the as a trader. Um, and, you know, and as I said, uh, you know, I use these grey boxes. Okay, so I have these set up. This is just uh, it's a simple. Um, this is for MT4. So, but this is a, a very simple uh, indicator called I Sessions, which it, it's 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 free. It's it's available. You can find it anywhere you find MT4. And I set it up so that it basically, you know, I have it as just it draws me the grey box, so it understands the uh, what the kind of uh, helps me just very quickly understand what happened during the Asian session and identify what, if any, trends may be uh, occurring because it just gives me a real, very quick visual um, visual clue. Um, I, I don't know if iSessions works on MT5, Peter, but I have no doubt that there will be an MT5 uh, equivalent uh, out there, okay, as the, uh, as, as the world shifts towards uh, MT5. Um, so hopefully you know, that just gives you a little example. You know, this is, uh, you know, oops, just one second. Um, but, 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 is that, you know, it, you know, it just helps you confirm, right, what is the trend? Okay, that's the Nikkei there. And it's a 15 minute chart. But, you know, you can see when you're just looking out at, well, uh, you know, it's, it's just helping you confirm that, you know what, the trend in the Nikkei at the moment on an intraday basis, that's down all right that is that's particularly down and so you can you can position yourself accordingly okay we you know it's and um, we all generally tend to love trading you know clear trends okay the, the challenge is is that the 
clear, clear trends are never as a as a as a as a prevalent as around as we particularly want them. But this is just on the upside of recognizing, you know, by having that, I can very quickly just confirm. All right, very quickly confirm prices. You know, the, the Asian boxes are going up, prices above the moving averages. Okay, it's making higher highs, high lows. This is definitely in a trend. You know, I want to be, I don't want to be fighting that. Okay, depending upon my trading style, I want to be basically working with that. And that that's one of the ways I kind of use the the those um, uh, that session indicator around the Asian session to just confirm what our trend is. So what you can do, and, and hopefully we've got a couple of minutes maybe just to, to show is to basically is, you know, it helps if you can build yourself a profile for your Asian indices on MT4 and MT5 and just watch how markets react on an intraday basis. All right, just take a little look at it. Is the Nikkei moving in unison with the ASX and the Hang Seng and also with the yen? All right. Are they, uh, are they moving in together or are they moving separately? Because that's the, the, when they're moving separately, there's something happening, there's something occurring. Is there generally a risk on or a risk off sentiment? Because that will also drive your trading decisions. And just take a look how to price react to previous highs and lows. That's always a, a, you know, an interesting point. And if it did, did that create an opportunity for you? So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, you know, as well as US and European indices, uh, we now know that uh, Asian indices are also an exciting asset class to trade. Uh, many traders are not aware of how much trading occurs on the Nikkei 225 index. Okay, remember that in terms of you know market capitalization, it's still the second financial center in the world. However, for most Western traders, the main move happens overnight, and you need to be aware of that. And it's also important to be thoroughly prepared and be aware of upcoming news items if you are going to trade it. There is a very strong correlation between the Japanese yen and the Nikkei, and it's important to be aware of this. On top of it. You can use simple trading concepts discussed in previous sessions that can actually help you engage and not unsurprisingly, let's manage risk, okay? We're always doing that. So if you want more information, okay, if you want more support, you can join us on Traders Yard. I'll be there for most of the afternoon, tradersyard.com forward slash group forward slash 312. Come and join us, okay? If you've got questions about this or uh, others, come and look and join us. My colleagues, Marcus and Jens, are always posting great stuff every day there that can help traders with their own particular journey. And don't forget to join us next time, okay? On Wednesday, my colleague Jens, okay, he's going to be talking about investing in the digitalization economy. He's going to be talking about NVIDIA, who Arm Limited is, and why the acquisition of Arm could be the driver for NVIDIA to reach a one trillion US dollar market cap in the future. That will be on two o'clock London time, Wednesday, 3rd of March. Check your inbox for the webinar link or head over to the website to, to register for the live webinars. I hope you found that uh, useful, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that's given you a little bit of insight, a little bit of understanding of the Nikkei and you know why it's interesting, why it moves, how it moves, what you need to be aware of and how you can start to sort of add it into your, into your sort of kind of a, um, your trading checklist. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, you can get in touch with us, okay? You can email us at globaladmiralmarkets.com or youtube.com forward slash admiralmarkets or facebook.com forward slash admiralmarkets global so um unfortunately we're, we're run out of time a little bit but i'm, I'm very very quickly just going to show you how i set uh, my profile you can see it just so it's very uh, very quick for you okay so if you just uh, bear with us for uh, bear with us for a moment we'll just uh, bring that up just uh here we go hopefully we can do that and it'll just literally be 60 seconds just to give you how you know how to 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 work that out and to to bring that up and uh, let's hope that Okay, so um, you know what I have here is uh, I'm hoping you can all still see me. Um, you know I have you can see it down here, and you know this is MT4, but it could be on MT5. It, you know there's no difference. I have an indices profile, and I have here okay the Dow Jones, the S and P 500, the Nasdaq. That's the uh, U.S. Treasuries, and here I have European DAX 30. I've got the, the Nikkei here the Australian ASX and the FTSE, okay? And all I needed to know is if you look across there and you look across yesterday, you know, what we saw was, you know, real correlation amongst all of the, the major global indices. It might have happened at a little bit of different times, but invariably there was huge correlation between those indices and you can use that information to help yourself. That's when, you know, when they are in correlation like that, okay, don't try and fight that. That's the algos in control across the world. Don't try and fight that, ladies and gentlemen. That is a pointless, pointless endeavor, okay? And what you can do then is you then you can break it down, okay, into, uh, you know, here's, I've got like a uh, an Asian indices one uh, that just, as I said, has the uh, has the ASX here, 
the Nikkei, okay, and also the Hang Seng and the uh, Aussie against the uh, the yen in this particular case, but also it could be dollar against the yen. What we're trying to just understand is get an understanding of you know where's the risk sentiment. Is the risk sentiment on? Is the risk off? We can see here, bottom right, that the Aussie against the Japanese yen has actually been dropping, hasn't it, significantly overnight. So that's Aussie weakening, Japanese yen strengthening. All right, so you've got, we've had a switch from risk on to risk off. And, and what do we know as the Japanese yen has strengthened? That has just effectively helped and continued that move in terms of you know overnight selling of the uh, of the Nikkei here as well. Okay, so as I said, you want to always understand those correlations and that risk sentiment that can help you enormously in trying to trade the uh, the particular Nikkei. Anyway, I uh, I hope you found that uh, useful. I'm afraid we've uh, run out a little bit of time today. As always, we're always a little uh, a bit short of time, but. Hopefully that has given you some insight into how you could trade the Japanese Nikkei market. By all means, take a, take a look at it, okay? You'll find it uh, fascinating. It's more uh, tools that you can add to your armory. And as always, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Trade well and uh, many thanks, everybody.